Hey, you my two cards, Sony and Beans. Today, we're going to be continuing our NFL predictions going with the Cowboys. And before we get started, I have to go ahead and say something. Yesterday, I tried to upload the Giants, New York Giants predictions. And for some strange reason, it is still not uploaded yet. So the reason that I didn't post yesterday is because the video is um, still processing for some reason. So, at, at some point in the future, or as I'm recording this, the, the video will just drop. So, be looking out for that. Anyway, let's talk about the Cowboys. Uh, I probably think that they're worse than a lot of other people think that they are. But I definitely think that they're pretty good. Um, and by that, I mean, I think that they are good. Definitely above average. But I definitely don't think they're Super Bowl contending. Okay? Um, I think they're kind of going down a downward slope. Um, which is never good. Um, I mean, I guess they've got Zeke, and they've got one of the best wide receiver cores. But, I mean, Dak Prescott isn't very good, especially for how much they just paid him. I mean, it, their their defense, I mean, I guess it, it's pretty good. Their defense is pretty good. I mean, their defensive line could use some work. But other than that, I mean, their secondary is solid. Their linebackers are great. It, they're a solid overall team, and they're going to... They're, they're going to have a hard time winning this division because this division, again, is full of teams that are like 8-8 eight and eight to 10-6. and six. So we'll see how well they do, which is probably going to be worse than a lot, of people, a lot of people think. In week one, going up against the Rams, oof. Um, the Rams are going to definitely take a step up. I mean, they're going to – I mean, they got rid of Todd Gurley, which is a – Something that it could be seen as something bad, but really, Daryl Henderson, who is now probably going to be their main um, running back, whenever he gets some play time, which obviously he will, he looks very, very good. And I mean, they've got some good talent on their offense. I forgot to say, um, Blake Jarwin is not a, they do not really have any good tight ends. Um, just thought I should put that out there. <clears throat> I'm talking about Dallas. Uh, so, I'm just going to, in week one at home, I'm going to give this one to the Rams. Pretty even matchup here, though. Could go either way. We'll see that in worst case, best case scenario. Then, in week two, up against Atlanta, I'm going to give the win here to Dallas. I, Atlanta definitely has talent, but they don't. They never seem to be able to use it in the right way. Um, they're going to have to make some kind of change. Like right now, you see over here, I've got them at 0-6 and, and haven't even predicted their record yet. So, um... Yeah, you'll see. And then in week three, going up against Seattle, this is another game where I think Seattle might be a bit better, but Dallas could also. It's a pretty even matchup. Um, this will definitely be a pretty high-scoring game, and I'm just going to give it to Dallas. I think that they'll come over with a spoiler here and, you know, maybe put some false hopes. So 2-1 and one going up against Cleveland. This is... Um, I feel like Dallas is a bit better here, but Cleveland could definitely win. That's why I'm taking a bit. Um, I'm I'm still gonna have to give it to Dallas here. I mean, they do have a pretty good defense, and while Cleveland does have a lot of talent, um, and they did get rid of Kitchens, which was a big problem last year. They they the I know I know play calling was a big problem last year, but they still. The, they still underperformed with the talent that they have, and I'm just going to assume that that's gonna, the way they're going to keep on playing. And I'm going to hand this one to Dallas. All right. And then, um, obviously, at home against the Giants, they're going to get the win here. So, 4-1, and one, doing much better than even I thought. And then in Week 6, up against the Cardinals. The Cardinals are a team that I think could potentially um, do really well. Um, I think at this, I think this is the season where the Cardinals are going to go from a really pretty bad to average team that they've been, kind of going up to above average playoff contending. So I don't know if they will make the playoffs, but I, I'm pretty sure that Dallas is going to win here. And then in week seven, um, going up against the Washington football team, um, feels weird to say that. This is another pretty close matchup, but seeing as Washington is at home, and they, they don't get me wrong, they, they, they're not that good, but they have an amazing offense. Add to that with the fact they got Chase Young. That defensive, that front seven that Washington's got is amazing. Their only bad parts, kind of like Dallas, are 
really their tight end. Jeremy Sprinkle isn't very good. So I'm just going to give this one to Washington here. Kind of a spoiler here in week seven. Five and two. Don't worry. You're still doing pretty good. But then you go over to Philadelphia. And I'm going to have to hand this one again to Philadelphia. You lose two straight divisional games. I just feel like Philadelphia, I know you might be looking over here saying, what the heck? They're not that good. But still, you have to see that um, they, they have talent. They have a pretty good offense. Um, Carson Wentz is talented, okay? I don't, I, I don't think he's as good. I don't think he's as good as a lot of the hype. But I definitely think he's talented. So you're 5-3 and three right now, um, right before your bye week. I think in week 9, I think you pull off a one last win against Pittsburgh. I know they've got talent all over that team. But uh, with the fact that Big Ben, um, I think he's coming off of an injury and he's getting older, I don't know if he'll be able to hold up his, this team. I know they've got lots of talent again. But if you don't have that best, you don't have a very good quarterback, it's not looking good. Week 11, a very tough matchup here. Coming off of a bye week, that really helps them out here. Minnesota at home, oh, this is a tough one. Um, the loss of Stephon Diggs did harm their offense, so um, hard decision here, but I'm going to have to hand it to Minnesota at home. I just think that there might be like a tier above them. All right. Um, then they go into Washington, and I don't think Washington can sweep here. I'm going to have them splitting with Washington. All right, and then week 13, I'm sorry, but I this, this could definitely, Dallas could pull off a win here. They're one of the teams that could explode and could beat a team as good as Baltimore. But, I mean, two straight Thursday games, of course, this is, this is Thanksgiving. But I'm going to have to give this one to Baltimore. I'm just sorry. So 7-5 and five now, and I think coming off of Baltimore, you've, you're pretty hyped up, I think. 7-5, and five. Um, 14 against Cincinnati. At this point, Joe Burrow will be into this offense, and Cincinnati will definitely be a force to contend with. Um, I, I don't know if they're quite there yet, though, to beat Dallas, but I think um, give it a few more weeks, a few more months, maybe next year. Maybe if they make the playoffs and they match. and maybe this is, I guess they can't play in the playoffs, but um, I think definitely this, this would be a very interesting game to watch next year, but as it is only week 14 of this year, 8-5. and five. All right? All right, so now going up against San Francisco. This is another kind of game like Week 13 where they could go over the top here and could win because they have talent. But if you're looking at San Francisco, um, I mean, they, they are a very talented team. I know people think people expect them to take a step back. Um, so I'm going to have to give the win to San Francisco as I was saying, they expect them to take a step back, but I don't know if they'll take a step. I don't. They'll have to like do back hand thing backwards or whatever to get this. San Francisco wins. I mean, I'm gonna get away from that game. In week 16, up against Philadelphia. Um, I don't. Again, I don't think that Philadelphia can sweep Dallas. I'm gonna hand this one to Dallas. Um, and then in week 17, we see this a lot, and I I, I like to see this. It seems like it always happens. And also ignore week 18. That's the playoffs. In the last week, it always seems like this in week one and then in week 17 is always when the worst teams beat the better teams. Um, and not necessarily saying that Giants are at home. They definitely have talent. Saquon Barkley, Daniel Jones. They, um, they know, I know they're not supplying too many weapons for Daniel Jones, but their defense is solid. And I think that's good enough that I'm going to have the New York Giants beat Dallas. So you win your – oh, so you come second in your division. <laughs> um. And look, I mean, look at all these Dallas wins. Okay, y'all, 9-7. and seven. So we're going to go ahead and do best, no, worst case scenario. We like to do best case scenario last, just so that we get, um, we end the video on a high note. So definitely, I don't think y'all can lose to Atlanta. Y'all can lose to Seattle and Cleveland. Um, I definitely don't think that y'all are going to be swept by the Giants. Um, I don't think Arizona can beat y'all. If... Ben, if Big Ben takes a huge step up, plus they're coming off of a bye week, that is definitely a winnable game for them. I also I don't see them being swept by Washington. Um, 
and but I, I, I could see them being shot by Philadelphia. So five and eleven is as low as possible. And again, this is not what I think is going to happen. This is a no, I do not expect this to happen. Just just know that this is like I do not think that it is humanly possible with the team that I have for the Cowboys to go any less than five and eleven. So let me go ahead and give them all their wins back. All right, nine and seven, and then their best case scenario, I'm gonna have them winning there, there. Um, I I still think that they split with Philadelphia. Um, I'm gonna have them win there, and I definitely can see them win there. So from five and eleven to thirteen and three, and then I have them in nine and seven. Um, so that's right down the middle. I love it when I do that. Um, that wasn't intentional. So I don't I don't think it's humanly possible for them to get fourteen and two or. 15 and 1. I don't think that's possible with the team that I have. I think if they play the best possible football that this team can muster up, then I think that it is possible for them to make it to um to make it to what does it say 13 and 3. But I also don't think if they play the worst that they possibly can with that team, I don't think that it is possible for them to get um worse than whatever the heck I had. I'm forgetting what I'm talking about. 9 and 7 is the final record. If you don't if you think that this is crap, this is the absolute worst absolute worst um oh, what's it called? If you think this is the absolute worst prediction you've ever seen, you can go to playoffpredictors.com and you can click you can create your own please permanently send it to me. Put it you can comment it you can and on any of my videos you can send it to me via um twitter you can tweet it and tag me in it um you can do the same thing you can just take a screenshot of something and send it to me on instagram tag me in it do whatever um i'm not very active on instagram but i am pretty active on twitter um all those links are in the description plus i if you want to see more of these terrible disgusting predictions um well, there's always a subscribe button. There's always my whole channel. Well, most of it. I used to do gaming. And there's always, um, there's always, you can support me on Patreon, which right now I don't have anyone. The link is in the description. To help me start a podcast so I can talk, like, once a week. I can, like, sit down at this desk and just straight talk for a couple hours about football, if y'all want that. Um, it'll basically turn the bean cast into an actual podcast so so yeah um again thank you guys oh oh so much for watching this if you watch all the way to the end even after all my rambling you are a trooper and i will see you guys in the next one <laughs> i'm gonna start saying this at the end of every one of my videos and nobody can stop me subscribe to become a beanie boy